Hi, welcome back. If you are new here, welcome. My name's Topanga. I'm a photographer. Usually I do studio vlogs, but I'm trying to break them up a little bit more. And I thought it would be really fun today to edit some photos and talk a bit about the key to unlocking your art style. I feel like every artist goes through this like hardcore struggle with how do I find my art style? And it was something that I struggled with for a really long time and it was something that really affected my art process and I just kind of want to chat about what I have learned over the course of my journey as an artist thus far and I thought it would be fun to kind of do a you know sit chatty edit with me type of video so grab a snack grab a beverage and let's go ahead and jump right into it all right so this is my photo of Sydney. We took photos this past week and she looks so lovely, but that's not why you're here. But we have to give some appreciation to my wonderful friend and model. I am going to go ahead and say, stop thinking of it as your art style and think of it as your creative world. And this was a state of mind, state of thinking that was brought to my attention by Andy J Pizza who is the host of a podcast called Creative Pep Talk. And he, I think he ha actually has a Skillshare class about your creative style, but he also talks about it on the podcast. And I was like super into anything that he had to say about it. It really opened my eyes. Most of the media that I consume is through movies. I love storytelling um, elements in movies and it, it can be film, it can be animation, it can be whatever, but I really noticed that they were extremely stylized. And whenever he said this, think of your style as a creative world, it, it really opened my eyes to how those worlds were developed. And it, it made me want to focus more about the colors in my work, the motifs in my work, what angles I was using. There's so many things. And it's not just exclusive to film and photography for me. Some of my favorite world builders are, you know, Neil Gaiman. He has a very, he has a very gothic style. It's very poised. It's very elegant, but it's also got a harshness to it. You know, I've always grown up with his work from, you know, simple children's books from Wolves in the Walls to, you know, as an adult now I've been getting more into the Sandman series. And even though those are two completely different target audiences, you can tell that it's him because of his his diction and this the themes of it. You know, Wolves in the Walls, as a kid, that was a bit of a scary book for me. Um, even, you know, something a bit more silly, like I, the day I swapped my dad for two goldfish, you know, it's a bit more lighthearted, but the way that he collaborates with illustrators and the, still the way that he uses his words to tell his story, it's very stylized and it suits his creative world. And you can have all of these different, you know, aspects of it, but at the end of the day, it's going to suit your creative world. And I'm going to talk about a little bit more on like, what you can do in order to, you know, flush all of that out. My next piece of advice to helping build your creative world is to really hone in on your tastes. Everyone has a unique perspective on life and you have different tastes. You may have overlapping tastes with people, but at the end of the day, if your tastes are your own. Um, and they are going to be what sets you apart from other people because there's so much art out there that everyone in some way copies each other. And I use copy lightly here because there are some just flat out thefts out there, but that's not her goal. I, I say copy in terms of like how Jaws pitch meeting was, I want to do alien, but not in space, on the ocean. We, we seek inspiration from our, our heroes and you know, artists that we really admire and we, that just speak to us. And that's that's good. That lets you know what you like, what, what your creative mind is after, what it's craving. And so honing in on that, and this was advice that I was given to by um, a photographer, his name's Nick. Um, 
I, this was whenever I was really first starting out and I was at like the peak of my style crisis. And I was like, you know, I just ready to absorb any advice that he gave me. And his advice to me was to find the genre of photography that I wanted to focus on and then look at people in that world and see what they're doing and apply that to myself. And that was really hard because I didn't entirely vibe with like the common style. And so I went elsewhere and started gathering inspiration from other places, from other mediums, like, you know, books, TV, film, music, and just applying those to my own art. I had a whole, you know, week where I was doing color practice, where I was looking at the colors of what photographers were using. And this is where I found that I really don't like warm toned greens. I know that sounds kind of, you know, silly to some people, but for me, that's like a driving force and and my art is like developing that color palette. Once you hone in on your taste and you find out what you do and you don't like, and that can be from anything. It can be from music, that can be an inspiration. If it's fashion, of, I see this, like for Sydney, we're, we're doing Larm, which is a Japanese style of fashion. And, you know, around that style, I wanted to find a location that suited it. I wanted to find a color palette that suited it. And, you know, I have those tools on my tool belt that I'm, I'm able to do that. So honing in on your taste and finding out what you do and don't like, I think really help, help you decide of what you want your world to look like. And then my last piece of advice is going to be don't think so hard. Honestly, one of the worst things that you can do for yourself is to sit down and get ready to you know, edit or you know, draw, whatever it is, and spend so much time on that one piece trying to find a style that it, it's blocking your creativity, it's making you stressed, it's you know, ruining, ruining your experience. The best thing that you can do is just keep creating because as you create, as you draw, as you edit, you'll you'll find like, oh, you know, I, I'm, I'm not so much a, a big fan of that. Let's, let's try this instead. Oh, I, I love that. And it's just, it's the natural form of creativity. The more you do something, the better you will be. Again, with, there was a whole week, all I did was color practice, which doesn't sound that fun. And towards the end, I was a little tired of it, but it helped me a lot. And I tried to, to keep it as fun as I possibly could. And I didn't think too much about it because I didn't go and actively make new art. I was just using old photos that I already had. So it was, and that I, I had already edited and posted. So it was a very like, low stress environment for myself. We were just experimenting. We were just feeling the, the creativity. It, it was a well needed week and I'm at a point in my artistic journey where I feel more confident in the art that I'm making than I have in a very long time. For the longest time where I was in this period of like, oh, I don't really know what my style is. Looking back, I had a style then, but at the time I felt so lost and like I was just creating and I was just, you know, experimenting all the time, which is great, especially when you're first starting out and you're trying to find what you do and you don't like. But after a while of doing that, you start to feel like, oh, I should be further along. I should, you know, by now I should know what my art style is. It takes being able to step away, consume, learn, process, and then come back and apply that knowledge in order to start moving again. And I think part of our problem with art style is that when we find something, we don't allow ourselves to grow. Your art style is never going to stay consistent. It's always going to be changing because as you grow in life, you will, you will experience new things, you will, your tastes will develop and change, and that's fine, that's great, that's what's supposed to happen. And we have to let ourselves grow. If our art style changes, that's fine because at the end of the day, it's still 
the same person creating and that will show through. So just, you know, don't think so hard. And as long as you take your time to learn and focus and just naturally just keep creating and keep experimenting and find what you like, pay attention to, oh, you know, I really like that. You have to just be mindful and you have to be intentional. And that is what is going to help unlock your art style and what is going to help you build your creative world. All right. <laughs> I really hope that this video wasn't too rambly. I know my words were kind of all over the place. I tried really, really hard to make note points and make sure to touch on all of them. Um, but I feel like I went on a little few tangents just a, a little bit. I'm very sorry. Um, but I hope that you were able to learn something. I hope this was able to be of motivation or inspiration to you. But thank you so much for watching and joining me today. If you liked this video and you would like to see more, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and leave this video a little like you like and all that good YouTube jazz. And I will see you next time. Bye.